Good day everyone! I'm Ada and I will be presenting my favorite algae, the Little Water Star Pediastrum borianum. Today's discussion on P. borianum will include its phylogeny, general characteristics, the reason why it's my favorite algae, and its potential uses. Let's first discuss the hierarchical classification and phylogeny of P. borianum. Pediastrum borianum is from the kingdom Plantae, division Chlorophyta, class Chlorophyceae, orders Ferropleales, and family Hydrodictyaceae. Each of these taxa shall be discussed briefly. P. borianum is a member of the division Chlorophyta or green algae which mainly harbor chlorophylls A and B and whose major reserve polysaccharide is starch that is formed within the chloroplast instead of the cytoplasm. Being a member of Chlorophyta, P. borianum is a primary alga and hence the chloroplast is bound by only two membranes and with no chloroplast ER. Green algae have achronematic flagella in pairs or in multiples of two. 90% of chlorophyta are freshwater, whereas 10% are marine. Here we can see the relatedness of chlorophytes with other primary algae. P. borianum is a chlorophycean. Shown here are the unifying characteristics of chlorophycians, of which the most important are the ultrastructural details of the following. Flagellar apparatus with cruciately arranged microtubular roots, closed mitosis where chromosomes divide within an intact cell nucleus, and cytokinesis mediated by a microtubular structure called phycoplast. Majority of chlorophycians are grouped into either the CW clade, which have a clockwise position flagella, and the DO clade, which have directly opposed flagella. The pediastrum genus emerged from the order Spheropleales, also known as the DO clade. Here are the different arrangements of flagellar apparatus. Highlighted in green is the DO flagella. The family Hydrodictyaceae includes genera of cocal green algae that form a synobium or a colony with a definite number of cells arranged in a specific manner. This family stands out because of the star-like colonies of the representative genus Pediastrum. The genus Pediastrum consists of colonial algae in a flattened disc with peripheral prongs and a fixed number of colonial cells at maturity. The genus Pediastrum was previously described as paraphyletic, but recent taxonomic revisions now suggest transferring some members into four new genera, Monactinus, Parapediastrum, Staridium, and Pseudopediastrum. Let's proceed to the general characteristics of P. borianum. Pediastrum came from the Greek words pedion and astron, meaning planar star. P. borianum is a very distinctive microscopic synovial colony having a flattened star-like shape. The colony is one cell in thickness. P. borianum usually has 2 to 32 cells and rarely exceeds 64 but may reach up to 128 cells. The cells are polygonal and adhered edge to edge. Peripheral cells possess two prongs whereas internal cells do not. The internal cells also have a different shape being less lobed. P. borianum is an unfenestrated species, meaning no perforations or spaces between the internal cells. The cell walls contain silica and alginans, which are hydrocarbons that help resist microbial decay and chemical hydrolysis. Chitinous bristles which confer buoyancy are found at the apex of the prongs in mature colonies of P. borianum. Also, a network of ridges covers the cell surface, forming a reticulate wall ornamentation. P. borianum has cosmopolitan distribution in fresh waters. It is non-motile and floats in the direction of water flow. Just like plants, P. borianum is a photoautotroph and therefore a primary producer. P. borianum may reproduce asexually via autocolony formation or sexually via fusion of isogametes. They have a haplontic life cycle and thus undergo zygotic meiosis. In asexual reproduction, each cell in the parent colony undergoes a series of nuclear divisions. The cytoplasm of the mother cell is then cleaved into uninuclear cells which then become active biflagellate zoospores. The outer wall of the mother cell ruptures and the zoospores are extruded from the parent colony. However, these zoospores are retained within a vesicle. After a period of swarming within the vesicle, the zoospores aggregate in the same planar pattern that was present in the parental synobium. Once the disc becomes stable, peripheral cells grow a pair of prongs and the vesicle disintegrates and dissolves, liberating the daughter colony and allowing it to grow and expand in size. In sexual reproduction, biflagellate isogametes are liberated individually from the parental cell. The gametes fuse together to form a zygote which will then germinate to produce and release zoospores. Each zoospore further develops into a thick-walled polyhedral unicell called polyeder. The single nucleus of the polyeder undergoes a series of nuclear divisions to form a second generation of uninucleate zoospores. The polyeder wall cracks and the zoospores are released but remain inside a vesicle just like in asexual reproduction. The zoospores undergo further development to become a new synobium. 
Once all the cells in a parent colony have formed their own colonies, an abandoned skeleton of the parent colony is left, as shown in the figure. So the main reason why I am interested in this organism is because of the diversity of the genus Pediastrum itself. In the genus Pediastrum, the star-like patterns, shapes of the cells, the fenestrations, as well as the ornamentation of the cell walls vary between species and between varieties. The complexities and intricacies of these star-like forms are very pleasing to look at, at least for me, especially when they are all together in one frame. Finally, we go to the potential uses of P. boreanum. Microalgae exhibit natural biosorbent properties and are relatively inexpensive to obtain, making them a potential bioremediation agent for heavy metal pollution and wastewater treatment. This study assessed the biosorbent capacity of the dry mass of P. boreanum for chromium ions in aqueous solutions. The highest removal of chromium ions attained was 70%, making P. boreanum a suitable agent for the development of an efficient biosorbent in chromium removal from wastewater. In another study, the biosorption capacity of modified and unmodified P. boreanum for the removal of lead, cadmium, and copper in contaminated water was evaluated. They found that there was an efficiently high adsorption rate at low pH values, with more than 90% of the metals removed from the solution within 30 minutes. On a different note, the potential use of microalgae in health is also explored. Microalgae are known to produce bioactive compounds. This study assessed the production of phenolic compounds and the antioxidant capacity of P. boreanum. Results showed that P. boreanum exhibited potent scavenger activity, and thus a potentially rich source of natural antioxidants which can be used in the prevention of oxidative processes caused by free radicals. In another study, the anti-inflammatory properties of P. boreanum have been investigated using P. boreanum algal extracts in an acute inflammation model in rats. The P. boreanum phenolic compounds extracts demonstrated a pronounced anti-edematous property, decreased the levels of cytokines, and improved the total antioxidant capacity of the liver. No DNA damage and significant signs of toxicity were observed, making P. boreanum an important potential source of bioactive compounds for the treatment of inflammatory diseases. Thank you for listening and here are my references.